call to order at 602. Any adjustments to the agenda? Um, consent to approve minutes of Thursday, July 28th. Do I have a motion? Move it. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion on those minutes? Hearing none, so moved. Approved minutes of June 27th. I have a motion. So move. And a second. Meg with a second again. I'll second. All right, thank you. Any discussion? All right, hearing none, so moved. Approve the minutes of Wednesday, June 8th. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. This is Meg. All right. Any discussion on those? All right, hearing no discussion, so move. Um, board correspondence and communication. Anybody with anything? Board development series? Well, we're going to plan that at the retreat, I think, should be one of the agenda items. Okay. What, how you guys want to do it? There's lots of lots ways of we can engage in that. I just think we should talk this through. All right. And public comment. Is there anybody on for public comment? All right. Hearing none. We are on to reports to the board. Um, Jamie is up first. Uh, so you have my report in hand. I do just want to mention um, it's the first time I've done this, but it's the first time we've been back uh, in attendance in person for our, our annual kickoff to the school year uh, as far as coming together as an SU for in-service. Um, so you are invited to attend. I think that you'll find the morning would be relevant for board members. Just let me know if you plan to attend, please, just so I, I can work out seating. Um, we are at the, at the Royalton campus of White River Unified District this year to kick off. Um, we have uh, Joelle Van Lent, um, who's going to be doing a presentation that morning and then doing some, some more work with some support staff in the afternoon. The Agency of Education is going to be there in the afternoon um, working with our high school and middle school teachers around a portrait of a graduate to start to frame out our proficiency work um, and revisions to our, our curriculum documents so that our curricular documents mm -hmm. are forward facing and easier for parents to understand what we want kids to know, understand, and do. And then also the elementary teachers are going to be engaging in work around the SU wide report card that we have been talking about at the elementary levels that are tied to our curricular standards um, with hopefully rolling that out this fall. That was delayed a year um, just based on COVID and other priorities that we needed to, to take care of first. So that works all kicking off. I'm really excited about it Monday, everyone coming together. So you are invited um, to that. And tomorrow, I just want to put a, a shout out, um, and I'm sure Anna will mention this too, that um, Tracy Thompson is a principal at Stratford at Newton, and she has been working um, with Jamie Rainville. I knew I was going to butcher Jasmine's name. I'm sorry. Jamie Rainville from Bethel and Jasmine Tremblay. Um, who's a middle school teacher at Newton, who's the, the three of them are working to oversee our, our new teacher program, new to WRVSU, doesn't mean you're new to the profession, right? So that we can best support new hires through a much more rigorous mentor-mentee relationship. Um, that was in the new collective bargaining agreement, the board, we highlighted the need for that work and the importance of that work. And so that work's rolling out when tomorrow everyone's coming together and then new hires will be in the building with their mentors on Thursday for a little while. And then Friday we kick off a uh, classroom setup, which is a new part of the um, collective bargaining agreement that was ratified. Um, and then we have in service Monday SU wide and then Tuesday and Wednesday are building based days for our teams to do work in their buildings. 
uh, and principal's been working with teachers to plan that out. So we're excited about in-service. We front-loaded in-service this year because we have those early release days that allow us to keep momentum on work across our schools throughout the year uh, with those 14 early release days. And so we front-loaded in-service to try to make certain that folks felt like they had the time they needed to really kick off and get some momentum on this work. So I wanted to highlight that. And then also just all the boards have heard um, presentations now from Eric Lafayette around uh, work through EEI that we're proposing. Um, and so just to, to, you know, again, to highlight, the plan would be new lighting projects in all of our schools, LED lighting for next summer, new controls in all of our schools for next summer, and then we would be replacing ventilation systems in Stockbridge, Tunbridge, in Rochester. We were able to secure some additional grant funding to do that work um, through the Agency of Education. And then also uh, new boiler projects happening at Rochester, Bethel, and Tunbridge. And the, we were also able to work to get $250,000 grants at each one of those campuses. This is all a side of ESSER these grants I'm talking about. So EI and Lyle Smith worked with Tara and I, and, and what it resulted in is we were able to bring in um, a, over another 1.5 million to do this work. And so, which will help us keep it cost neutral. So we're excited about that. Um, and we're gonna continue to try to leverage those grants to do you know, continued improvements to our buildings of course, the state's looking at buildings that are in the highest need. That's how they're making these determinations for that, that additional grant money outside of ESSER. Um, but know that certainly we're going to try to stay on top of it. You've heard Eric say that having projects that are ready to go helps us when we're trying to get funding. So know that we are working behind the scenes, too, to get some additional projects ready to be able to submit for additional grant funding. Um, and I'll take any questions uh, folks um, may have. All right. Oh, um, one, uh, one additional thing. Sorry, Bill. I did send you a copy of everyone on the, uh, all of our board members received a copy of my letter that I sent to the um, Vermont State Board, which just reaffirmed the motion that you had taken last year on Ripton because now Lincoln is in a similar situation and has reached out to several different supervisory unions to see if there's any interest in them joining. So I just reaffirmed what you all took action on last year in August and sent that in a letter. The turnaround in the letter was tight, so it was a way for me to be able to convey what you had said last year. But also I, I just reminded the state board that we are a supervisory union that had merged from one you know two already down to one and just reminding them about all the merging that occurred throughout the supervisory union act 46 and that we're really just starting to be able to leverage those plans and some of the promises that were made so question on that um what's driving um there's ripton before and now lincoln um, what's driving this propensity of some districts to want to bolt their supervisory union uh, other than that, uh, the word's getting out how great the White River Valley Supervisory Union is, and everybody <laughs> wants to join a team. But is there a pattern going on here? I wish that's what it was. <laughs> well, um... So, no, that's right. No, I do think, so I, what I would say is why I think the state boards have been looking at us and other districts is that these two towns do, they are adjacent to us. So they have touched one of our communities. So Ripton um, with Hancock and Lincoln, believe it or not, does touch Granville. Mm -hmm. um, so that's part of why they started looking at us and the state board looking at us. And we are a supervisory union and they are leaving supervisory districts. Okay. And they're interested in, in being part of a supervisory union. So that that is why it's been funneled this way. Uh, and it's why the state board, you know, my, t my take on this is that the state board would love an SU to say, yes, please join. Because that makes their decision much easier. Um, 
I don't think that they have the appetite to necessarily do a forced um, relationship of a district, a singleton district with an SU. I don't see that coming. I could be wrong, but that's certainly not the direction they've been taking in their meetings. So my plan is to attend. I've asked Kathy to join me at the next um, Vermont State Board meeting. Um, and those are public meetings and I'm happy to share out with all of you when that's happening. You're welcome to join as the public. Um, they already have that letter and you know they'll be discussing Lincoln. And then a, a question or comment. I uh, appreciate uh, you inviting the SU board to attend the in-service thing. I think it's time to celebrate and, mm -hmm. and to learn. Uh, but you're talking about seating. I uh, got me a little, little anxious. So I just want to make sure, and, and I'm, <laughs> I might not be the only one that you're have, planning to have a seating in the back. We're not sitting up on stage. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> We can still throw egg video in the back. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned to duck over the years. <laughs> All right, guys. Anything else? Any questions for Jamie? Okay. We are on. To Thank you. Uh, similarly, uh, we have a lot of, um, you know, our work connects uh, very closely in this building uh, and across all of our schools. So you can saw my report. We've um, sort of continued the work that we discussed throughout last year and summarized at the end of the year around uh, our assessment um, system and um, switching over all of our our schools to well, all of our all of our districts over to track my progress, which we piloted in two of our districts last year um, to great success. So all of our teachers will be trained on using that. Um, and we're looking forward to having students in kindergarten through eighth grade using that. Kindergarten will not go in the fall. Um, they will have them join in the winter as we did in our pilots last year um, as a way just to get them introduced. But I think we'll have, it'll be really helpful to have that information that is consistent um, just to see where are we having real strengths and where can we share those, um, those strengths across our, our different schools. Um, we are also uh, adjusting the calendar a bit, which uh, affects sort of when you all look at data um, we are uh, aligning better to where we think we'll get the data that shows us what students are learning in our classroom and where where their knowledge is and where you know potential gaps are. And so the um, the first benchmark window will be October, which means that uh, uh, you all will probably be looking at at data in uh, November, um, and then in February following the January window, and then in May following an April window. So just adjust things a little bit, uh, but really aligns well to um, when we want to be getting that information for, for um, students. Our calendar, which was linked in the report, um, has probably a fewer assessments in it. Uh, I think we're really trying to shift from um, focusing on sort of the, the data that we can see at sort of the, you know, the 3,000 foot level to the data that um, you know, teachers are using every day in the classroom with their students. So uh, this does not mean that there's sort of any less information uh, being shared around what students know, but we hope it's a lot closer to the students um, and uh, between teachers and, and those who are actually working with students on a, on a daily basis. So we'll be supporting uh, more work at that level. Uh, as Jamie talked about, we're working a lot on proficiencies, um, starting with um, sort of drafting a proficiency-based report card uh, that we anticipate will change over the course of the next year. Um, but the best way to get this work moving is to have it and be able to see how it's how it's working for us, how it matches up to what is happening in the classroom, and then be able to make adjustments based on on that. So we're looking forward to that, and then um, you know pulling that that through line from kindergarten through 12th grade, so that um, they really are building um, the proficiencies that students are learning are really building upon each other, so that it makes uh, sense throughout their their time in White River Valley Supervisory Union. Uh, and the last piece was really about being really excited about um, our, our mentoring program. Um, and it's, we're trying to change the language as both Jamie and I around, this is not just teachers who are brand new to the profession. They may be new to the state. I've experienced all of the, 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 uh, the learning curve you have just trying to learn new things in, um, in new places. Um, and so we are really looking at what do individual teachers need um, they may need a lot right in the beginning and they'll be fine because they've been doing this for years or they may need more support over the course of two years um, and really trying to individualize the mentoring to meet individual um, educators uh, where they are. 
um, and as they are. So, happy to take any questions. Um, sorry. Um, the statewide assessment that's due sometime, but they have you have this caveat, you have this asterisk that says when they're willing or able to, I don't know which it is, to release it. What's the state's hang up here? Is it that they're just overworked? Or, and this is the, what we're talking about is the overall assessment, performance assessment of our students. And one of the goals that we voted last year was to move towards meeting or exceeding uh, state proficiency goals by 2025. And this is the first big measurement there. So what's the hang up with the state here? So it, I think it, oh, I think every year it takes a while to make sure that the data from across the state is matches up with our students. I don't, I'm like, I'm not the person who figures out how all that sort of data cleaning goes on. I think last year the biggest thing was just because of COVID, they they weren't really had, they didn't have a lot of confidence in some of the information they had, and they were kept trying to I think double check it. Um, so we have not heard one way or another. I don't, I don't, I haven't gotten any information on what their timeline is. Mm -hmm. So we sort of kept the timeline that we had had in pre COVID years that, that, that information is usually available for the public, um, in, in August or September. Um, but we, we just don't have any information on what is, yeah, what's available. I will say again, we can, we can look at individual student information and, cl and classroom information, um, and be able to start making plans for students. So it's not holding up our ability to say, okay, this is a this is a big gap in our fourth grade. Let's make sure we've got the instructional tools to sort of close that. We just don't have, there is um, the ability to sort of release it publicly until they lift that embargo. We'll use the term embargo. And those, some of you that are older as I am, we talked about the Cuban Missile Crisis and the embargo and the, remember the ships coming in, so I was wondering, if we're going to weaponize the state, so I think that's um, the word they use. It is. <laughs> okay. yeah. um, but it sounds like track my progress is a tool that is going to be much more uh, useful for for the practicing teacher to um, to figure out what where where the gaps and how to move forward. Is that the, the convincing <clears throat> thing that you yeah. switched? So I think I don't think that the, our previous system, Star 360, was a bad tool. Mm -hmm. uh, in some ways, it could be overwhelming in the number of ways that the data were presented um, and that you could pull different reports. And I don't think that um, folks at myself, including when I first got here, had all of the different ways in which you could look at that information. Um, there are also ways in which it in which Track My Progress does offer more information in terms of understanding how individual students apply approach to question, mm -hmm. how they answered a specific question. We could never see that in STAR 360, how long it took them to answer it. So was this something, were they going like, you know, through like this and just sort of picking? Were they really struggling and spending five minutes on a question? Those sorts of things we can get from Track My Progress that we couldn't get start to STAR 360. In that way, we found that if we really want to use data to improve instruction and improve student learning, um, that that information was really helpful to us. Uh, and less, if less, uh, fancy reports <laughs> that you can't really do different things with students with. We can have lots of bubble graphs, but if we can't, if we don't know how to translate that into changing our instruction, it doesn't really help. Well. So that's what we're hoping. I, again, there are parts of STAR 360 that I, um, I think people use very well, and I think our, some of our teachers are very good at pulling all those reports. Um, but in terms of finding something that was going to um, really make that, close that, um, sort of that link between assessment and instruction, uh, we find that track my progress is we think is going to do a, a lot better for more teachers. And my last question again, it goes back uh, to my generation. Uh, the the report cards um, back in the day it was A B C D, and then it switched to kind of satisfactory, um, excellent, that sort of thing. What's the, the measurement, uh, are, are, or is that still being uh, debated within uh, the hallowed halls of? of so in, in general, it may be, it may, you may look different differently. I don't think that's has been decided, but you, you, you have proficiency. Yeah. You could have exceeding proficiency. You could have, you know, partially meeting or, or not yet meeting. Same as we sort of see in our other reports. I have seen a, a variety of different legends out there. Some of them I find to be a little bit harder to understand the shortened of PP, BP, AP. Like, <laughs> I know, you know, this is a communication tool for students and, and for families, parents. and so the where we can get rid of sort of the, the lingo um, will be helpful. So, and, and oftentimes you see a, like a four-point scale, which would 
which would be the which would map right onto so four being sort of beyond expectations, three being meeting expectations, two being not quite there, and one well, well below. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any more questions, guys? I guess the only other thing I mean, it's in the report, but we have a we have a calendar of those of all the reports, and we try and we put the try to put the budget and um, the special education and the social emotional all those reports on the same place. Mm -hmm. Again, you know, we try to stick to that as much as possible. If things change, we'll we'll let you know mm -hmm. if something isn't available when it should be, or mm -hmm. you know, should give you an idea of where we're heading and what's what you'll see at the individual district level and what you'll see at the SU level. Meg. Um, on that question, so that is the the budget calendar is on as a discussion item. Is there more to it than that? Like, are, will we discuss it, or have you pretty much told us what we need to know? I mean, it's I see it. No, we'll discuss it. And yeah. we'll come back around to it. Okay. Yep. Great. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you are up. All right. So just some highlights from the special services department. Um, we. Um, we, I've been working really, really closely um, with Michaela Martin, who um, has started a July 1 with us um, as our intensive programming systems support coordinator. Hopefully I got, all, I got that correct. Um, but she and I have been working really closely, um, kind of uh, outlining and setting up kind of what our multi-system um, of supports is going to look like for the White River Valley Supervisory Union. Um, we've been creating a lot of supporting documents, um, you know, for um, our building administrators um, and um, their staff. Um, she and I have been doing a lot of um, trainings around um, what is a multi-tiered system of supports and kind of what um, you know, are, are the highlights or the kind of non-negotiables as part of um, a systems of support like that. Um, and it's important, um, especially with the um, new rules and regulations um, that I briefly mentioned um, back when we met in June. Um, some of those have started already um, as, uh, as early as July 1 and uh, the rest um, have been delayed, um, but will definitely go in effect um, July 1 of 2023. Um, so um, just how that is really connected and um, we're basically getting a, another year um, to kind of really get it up and running and getting a solid system um, because that, that multi-tiered system of supports is really what's going to support um, the new rules and regulations um, for special education. And I'll do, um, I'm planning, I think it's next month to do kind of a little presentation for all of you to kind of connect that um, so you'll have a better a better idea. Um, but it's very, very connected um, and, and necessary um, that you have that system. So Michaela and I have been doing a lot of work around that and um, Onda has been joining us to kind of help finish that loop with what do we need for trainings and and really kind of polishing off our documents and things as, as we share them. Um, and um, and also, you know, Dina Atwood and, and Marilyn um, Husky um, are kind of school attorneys. You know, they um, did a virtual uh, training for all of our building administrators and some of our central office staff so that they too would have like an understanding of, of how it's all connected and, and the importance. Um, so that has been a huge focus um, this summer. Um, we, uh, the uh, special services department, we are um, fully staffed. Um, so that means I, I have more new to Vermont or new to our SU staff than I have returning. So there's been a lot of support um, with our new staff coming in. I've been doing a lot of support with them already, um, trying to get them ready uh, for the start of the school year. And I'll be spending most of the day with them tomorrow, um, as well as part of the, the new teachers. Um, so that's been that's been great. 
um, but also doing a lot of support um, for our families and students over the summer um, as well. Um, we had a, a well-attended, um, what we call extended school year experience um, that was really well attended, um, but also, you know, just my door and my phone and my email was just open to, you know, families and students in our community. So I did a lot of work um, with just with them just so that um, they all had a, a good summer and are ready for the fall. So, and it's been great. The summer's been great. It's gone by really fast. And <laughs> I, think, I think we're ready to go. So if anyone has any questions. Any questions, anyone? Yeah. I'm sorry, I don't mean to put out applause, but I'm just curious. <laughs> yeah. okay. um, uh, the, you mentioned that, uh, that your educational staff can uh, read an interventionist. Mm -hmm. You had that four day workshop on direct instruction and also Bonnie Bourne's. Yes. Um, Bridges, called Bridges. Bridges so could you just um, highlight again um, what that's all about and uh, where are those uh, those two programs focus is it particular schools or is it it's SUY it's SUY yes. and is it for um, kids that need special help and that are fall under your thing or is it whatever student is struggling and needs a little extra help how, how it's both. Right? It's both. It's at the targeted level and intensive level. Yep. So that's why reading and math interventionists <coughs> is open to them as well. It's just another, uh, I call it like tool in our toolbox, you know, to build our systems of support. And can, is it too soon to have some idea of how that those programs are doing? Uh, so Bridges was first used halfway through the year, probably late winter after yep. the new year. So it's only back. So we don't have a don't have anything yep. great for Bridges yet. Um, the direct instruction reading um, for most students it has been successful, uh, but again, just the rotation of new staff, new training. So the staff that have been in the program now for you know, two or three years um, seem to be really successful with it. Um, so now we just need to keep the staff so yeah, we can and, and, have and the highly like trained. It's starting to happen. It is. I'm so excited. So we just need to keep that highly trained staff, you know, with with our students because that's when we're seeing results. So when they're comfortable implementing it and doing it themselves, then the students are really making progress. I think it's just terrific. I mean, that they have to have stable staff. Mm -hmm. um, that I says agree. something about their motivation while they're here um, and all the people that are making a difference so that uh, they've got a job and they know they're making a difference. So I'm with you on that. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Tara. Good evening, mm -hmm. everybody. Mm -hmm. Hello. So you have my report. It outlines where we're at with regards to FY22. And then I did share my FY24 budget timeline that you're familiar of seeing in the past. And then I also put in my report a big thank you to the central office support team for all the work that has gone into getting everybody up and running for our next school year. And then the rest of my report comes later on in the meeting. So if there's any questions. All right, thanks Tara. Great. Okay. Hello everybody. I'd like to uh, quickly highlight some things from my report. Uh, so in the past, we've used a product called Otis, for those of you who remember. And uh, we're now uh, starting to use a product called EduClimber for in a similar purpose. Just starting that. And I hope to have more to, to share uh, as we get into rolling that out and uh, visualizing all of our data. You heard from our chief academic officer about Track My Progress. Uh, so in my department, we support that in terms of uh, 
rostering accounts uh, for the teachers to uh, have to put uh, students through the assessments. And then um, we did a big uh, e-waste project. And uh, the one thing I would like to specifically highlight is uh, we have a new website now. Uh, the SU was the last in terms of <laughs> refreshing uh, you know, at the district level first. And I actually got a compliment today when somebody was looking for something on the website. And that's not uh, good. That was a, a nice change. Um, and then finally, uh, last week, last Thursday, here at the central office with the team here, and we had the administrative assistance in for a, our yearly uh, training day uh, collaboration. That went uh, really well and smoothly and makes a big team effort. And I will entertain any questions. Mm -hmm. Bill? In 25 words or less, what's a data dashboard? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, one place where we can aggregate our separate assessment pieces. So track my progress, uh, look at Onda to make sure I'm mm -hmm. remembering this correctly, PNOA, uh, Fontis and Pinnell, SBAC. Mm -hmm. We take these separate systems which have data about the students and their assessment progress and then are able to merge it together across the SU uh, to see, for example, how you know third graders did across the SU and across all of our assessment products. So it's, a, it's a database that's, that's focused and designed around to help educational systems. And yep. Uh, and hopefully, at its highest and best use uh, to inform uh, not only instruction, but parents in terms of how, how students are performing. And the other thing is just a comment again. Um, I think our website's really important, and one of the superintendent's goals, and I hope it's going to be our goals because we're all one team, is to uh, promote um, what we're doing and why we're doing it to the educational community. And we have one educational community. You know, it might be 10 towns, but we're one. And a building block of that, an important one, is the website, finding what you're looking for. Oh, boom. And so that, I think that's going to be an important building block to achieve what we want to do is not only do well, but attract parents and their children to come to an organization, a supervisory union that's, that's, that's really making strides and they want their kids here. And one way is to, to learn what we're doing and through the website. So I like that. Thank you. Good. Yeah. Any other questions? Correct. All right. Um, WRVSU Policy Committee. Um, we are on reading number two of Policy B35 Social Media and C35 Verification of Student Residency for Tuition Payment and Correspondence Affidavit. I think this has made it around to all of our individual boards. We've um, taken all the feedback. Um, and I think we're ready to move these forward to be um, voted and approved um, at our next meeting next month. Yeah. Is there any discussion or comments about that? If not, we'll plan. Yeah. Um, so I have a question about a different policy that was supposed to go to the policy committee that was brought up in our district, and that's the flag policy. It was kind of a small policy. We were hoping it would be done rather quickly. Um, we're working on that. We'll get to that here in a second. Okay. But um, so for these two, the plan is to move them forward at our next meeting for voting, unless anybody on here has a reason why we should not. Okay. And on to the flag policy. We just went, finished going over that at the policy committee meeting, Shannon. Um, and that will be moved on for its first reading um, next month. And so it'll do the same process, make it around to the boards, do our three readings. And one of the very concerned students lives in my house, actually two of them. So <laughs> but they and their groups and their teachers. Yeah. So they're yeah, looking at coming. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else for policy? Quick okay. question from Stratford. When I bring, when I, I'm just going to report to our board, this would be the last chance, like has the feedback loop has closed. 
and we're going to be voting on these. Next the, uh, yeah, so you could you could the local yeah the local boards could provide feedback still another time, Meg. Okay. If they wanted, right? Like so, this will go on as a second reading for all the local boards too. Okay. And if there was significant feedback that changed the policy, my practice would be to pull the policy committee together and share that, right? And then they would decide if we're going to like revise it. And okay. then what would happen is you would get that revision at the full board as reading number three. And we would say, here's the revisions that occurred. Wouldn't stop us from taking action if the committee decided that they wanted to make those revisions. Um, because it would be still the third reading, but it would be up to the full board to decide based on those changes whether they're ready to take action or they want to wait and do a fourth reading. And is there a, a date goal for voting or like a month? Yeah, my the goal for these two would definitely be to get them hopefully approved next month. So because September meeting. Especially the yeah, uh, September meeting. Yeah, because the social media one as is, because we haven't had negative feedback is included in the staff handbook saying waiting for adoption but it's in there to give guidance um and the tuition you know verification process will come handy really quickly mm -hmm. if we have any type of tuition in question so the sooner yeah the sooner we can get these on the books the better so full board would vote to adopt in september local boards would finalize that in october October for local boards. Yeah, because I was just thinking our September meetings in two weeks. Yeah, no, right. Yeah. Local one boards cycle. wouldn't finalize until October. Got it. Okay, thank you. Okay, so on to discussion items. Um, full board retreat. So we didn't get a solid date on the Google poll. It was pretty mixed. I think eight was the highest we got on the Saturday. So there have been some suggestions about looking at Thursdays. We don't have significant committee work happening on Thursdays right now. Um, I do have possibly some special meetings coming up early in the month, but I was gonna throw out there for the board to consider, could we leverage either Thursday the 22nd or Thursday the 29th? I put this in my board report, like have it somewhere where we could do dinner, and I think, you know, certainly some of the topics I've heard you talk about is mission vision, which at that point we would have a draft of a strategic plan for folks to start to weigh in and give feedback on. And I also want to get some guidance from the full board around um, how, how might you want to do your developments, board development series work moving forward. So I feel like just those two items plus like meeting each other, like figuring out how you're gonna like really formalize a mentor program. I think we got plenty of work for a few hours. So that's what I was suggesting was something like a 5.30 to 8.30 meeting with dinner involved. So I don't know how, I don't know if that lands well or not. So it's something Kathy and I had talked about. I think we pick, we just pick a day. I think I'm, I'm leaning towards the 22nd in case we do something outside the it'll still be a little bit warm outside um and we just pick that day and people really work to commit and try to to make it because if we do the poll it's never going to come out exactly right and um if you really want to be involved in this work you'll show up can we have a show of thumbs can i have a show of thumbs if people are comfortable with just picking a day and making it happen I have one thumb. Oh, there's more. There's more. It's um, hard, it's hard for me right now with that Thursday. Like personally, I need to I need to triangulate that with partners in childcare and things to find out if I am in fact available on either of those days, and we're missing two board members. But I hear you, and I do want to nail it down. Okay, well, we've tried Saturdays, we've tried other days, and they haven't worked. So I think we just need to pick a date and hope for the best. And it looked like thumbs up for the majority of us here. So. I think we're going to pick the 22nd. Jamie's going to schedule it and we'll give you a time. Well, the time is 530. We'll give you a location to be determined. But it will be in person. It will not be available online. Yeah, I think a retreat. Yeah. 
Yeah, not a question. <laughs> so voting on that. <laughs> All right. Um, board goals. Are we going to discuss those that night? So well, they're on, they're in here, and I warned them for. I warned them because they were on future agenda items as possible action. So, yeah, I think the table is the boards. So, um, the board goals that are in here are aligned with with our superintendent goals. Um, we can adopt them tonight, or we can discuss them at the retreat and then adopt them in October. Um, what's the flavor of the group? Do I have a suggestion? My suggestion would be we we have a, a we have a conversation at the the retreat when we talk about all of our other things and we adopt them um, in October because we've all had a chance to talk about them and in case there's something else we'd like to add in or um, thoughts that come out through that meeting. Um, but I want to know if anybody else feels differently. I agree with that. Sounds like that's the plan, Jenny. I do as well. I think that sounds great. Thanks, guys. Yeah, I think that gives us a chance too to like for people who may not be able to make it, like make sure I would like to circulate these goals to my fellow board members. Is that okay? Yeah. So like now's the time if you have thoughts to pass them in writing to um, me or me, and then we'll make sure they're there as part of the discussion. Perfect. Uh, date, um, data calendar and corresponding budget calendar. I have one question about the goals right now before we move on from that. Sure. Um, a couple of them, like I'm looking at the last version I saw was in May, and then there's this version, and the language in 1.1 1. 1 shifted from um, produce to review and adopt a roadmap and a revised curriculum. Is that is is that underway, and is that something that we could see the one that's uh curriculum. So, I put that, so i put that in my report i said that the board would receive a draft of that in september the admin team all weighed in on a draft last thursday and so the plan is to roll that draft out and have it be part i just was saying part of that strategic plan would be to at your retreat to give comment on that and also, it's going to go out to the greater community once it's formatted. So its draft is done. Kate uh, McLean, our director of communication, I got that. Uh, is working on cleaning it up and making it look really nice, uh, so they can go out to the greater public to get feedback on. I think the goal would be that the board would take action on that in like November. And to clarify, these are okay. the board goals, not this, like the, what we were looking at before was the superintendent goals. So his goal was to produce it and our goal is to revise and apply. So. Oh, copy that, that makes sense. So any other discussion on that? All right. So now we're on to calendar and corresponding bud calendar. So these are in your um, packets. They're not, there's nothing that changed significantly in these um, from what you've adopted the last two years under under my tenure. We, other than you'll see that your data reports on track my progress are a little later because we've changed that local assessment timeline to October within the assessment window. Anda had talked to you about that in June as well. Um, and so the reason for that is, is that we're trying to do our local assessment time line to link up when we think we can use it best to inform universal instruction. Mm -hmm. And the way we were assessing in the spring in many of our schools was after Smarter Balance in May. And at that point, we get data at the end of the year and there's not really anywhere to go with it. And so the idea is that we'll get data in October, we'll get data in the middle of the year, we'll get data in the spring where we could still use it to inform universal instruction, but also interventions um, and, and get supports in place prior to leaving for the summer um, if a student needed it, if they're not making appropriate rates of growth. So that's the biggest change is that when you get your data, of course, is after those assessments. Yes. 
this way. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, and I, as I said before, uh, that is one set of data. Uh, students are still doing, uh, teachers are still, you know, assessing students in September um, to find out where they are, especially any students that are brand new to our schools. There's different screeners and um, ways that we're going to get information on students. We're not going to wait until the end of October <laughs> to know what they are able to do. But this actually gives us a, a little bit in, in talking with other districts and talking with um, some assessment professionals. This gives us a better understanding of actually how our instruction is going. Um, rather than just what what did or didn't happen over the summer, which is a little bit what a September assessment can give you of you know that summer slide things like that. So this will, um, so we have screening to figure out where kids are when they come in in September, um, but using the October benchmark will give us a better idea of what's happening in our classrooms and um, what what do we um, what can we be working on in that way. Thank you. Yeah. So it's been practice that we have you actually move and adopt this because I think it's a really, I think it's a direction from the board to the administration to just like this is how we've decided we're going to do business and I think it helps just plan our, our agendas out right like it keeps us on track for budgeting, keeps us on track around reporting. Mm -hmm. I just think it's a really powerful thing when the board says, you know, you're going to make certain you're going to have our student support budget in front of us in October. So I'd like you to take action on it if you feel comfortable with it. Okay. So are there any questions on it? And if none, I would entertain a motion to adopt the board meeting calendar of reports. Is that all you need to say? Meg had a question. Go ahead, Meg. I got a practical question, which is that I'm looking at this document too. I don't know if you can see that, the budget timeline. What's the relationship between the document you just put up and this? Because that one has a column for budget things. And all this to say, I'm, I think I am ready to vote on it and all this makes sense. Just want to make sure. I'm so uh, the one pager, Anda took what Tara sent to you, uh -huh. captured it, and Tara just provides a little more detail and what it means in regards to the third draft. Got it. So it's like almost a streamlining it. This yeah, it's a one pager that captures both. Yep. Any other questions? I have a motion to adopt the board meetings calendar of reports for FY 2223. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Is there any discussion? All right. So all those in favor say aye. I'll go through each person. So I'll start with you, Meg. Aye. Um, Tammy. Aye. Sylvia. Aye. Andrew. Aye. Rodney. Aye. Shannon. Shannon, are you there? Uh, Jackie. Aye. Aye. And Kathy's an aye. Shannon, can Sorry, you I'm an aye. There's a spider like the size of my hand in the room, <laughs> in his room. So I have to <laughs> But I'm here. <laughs> All right. So. So it was a unanim unanimous. So thank you guys. Hey, Kathy, real quick. This is Meg. I'm, I'm still working on coloring inside of the lines of when I'm supposed to talk. I know I should have said this in discussion, but I just did want to say thanks to you guys for, I like the um, sentiment of actionable data, like adjusting this so that you can really make it practical and something you can work with. So I just want to say thanks for that. Nice, Meg. Thanks. All right, guys. This is Tara, but not great news because it's talking about oil and propane this year. But oh boy, Tara. So in my report under discussion items, you'll see that I have the recommendation from our buying group that we actually have board approval on a range for oil and propane given the unstable market conditions and what this allows us to do is to lock into a contract without having to schedule an emergency meeting in order to do so 
and he recommends that we lock in for oil at 3.74 to 3.84 per gallon and propane at $1.68 to $1.75 per gallon. It came down. We didn't want. We didn't bring this to you earlier because mm -hmm. we were hoping it came would come down, and it has come down. But we're bringing it to you tonight to discuss because we don't know what direction it's going to go. Yeah. So, Tara, are you are you feeling that this is what we should do? Are you recommending this? Yes, we went from over four dollars down to the three seventy four to three eighty four range. And when we got a bid from Irving, they literally gave us 24 hours to lock in on the contract. Any questions or anybody have any uh, suggestions, questions? If not, then I, we need us to take a vote, right? Um, would it make sense for us to approve basically like the max amount? So rather than having the low range and the high range, you know, if it's lower than what it is, I don't want to have to like come back and vote again. If that's what you're comfortable with, that's fine. I'm comfortable with paying less. <laughs> Me too. Me too. <laughs> uh, Tammy? Well, if that's... Uh, is that an option? Are we us? sure? Is it... Are we sure it's not going to... I'm not allowed to lock into a contract above $3.84 for oil. Yeah, say like pay up to yep. seven three. What? Hey, Tammy, your 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 question is is that that would be the the most it could be without having to come back and have a special board meeting. So if we can lock in at three eighty four, then Tara's we're get we're giving her approval to 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 lock into a contract if that's the best she feels she can get. But if it's if she can't get one at that rate, then she would we would have to come back and have a special meeting. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. All right. So a motion could be um, we approve Tara, approve the business office, except. Yes. 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 A one year contract. So what would the, how would you like the wording, Tara? <laughs> If you want to do just a single dollar amount, I would say for oil not to exceed $3.84 a gallon and for propane not to exceed $1.75 per gallon without additional board approval. Okay. So do I have, can somebody make a motion? I'll make that motion. Right. And do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'm going to call the vote. So I will start with Tammy. Aye. Andrew? Aye. Meg? Aye. Shannon? Abstain, but I got the spider. Okay. Jackie? Aye. Rodney? Aye. Sylvia? Aye. Bill? Aye. Kathy's an aye. So the ayes have it with one abs with one abstention. Um thanks guys. You can't abstain. Thank you all, and I will notify you as soon as I lock in. Oh. I need, I need nine votes because you're a 16 member. Okay, so Shannon? Yeah, I'm sorry, what did we just vote on? Um, this, we're voting on, sorry about that, we're voting on the, the heating. We Tara needs to lock in for the heating. So our vote is to not to have let her lock in providing she doesn't go over 384 per gallon yep. of oil and a dollar okay. 75 for propane um so we need you to vote. i'm an eye on that motion thank you okay sorry. we needed nine sorry votes. we're just barely out of quorum yeah because okay. we're 16 voting members sorry my <laughs> nine-year-old is still freaking out but it's all good now 
he really was like this big. Okay. So it was unanimous. Eyes have it. Yeah. Board goals, no data calendar. We did that. Oil, we did that. Resignations, new hires. So we have um, a retirement to announce. Mm -hmm. And uh, Marty, I hope I'm not putting you on the spot, <laughs> spot but um, Marty Gratz has mm -hmm. served has served as a special education para professional mm -hmm. within the supervisory union and the Orange Windsor Supervisory Union for decades um, <laughs> and served first branch unified district students um, for a number of years. And so Marty's going to be retiring from the organization. So I just wanted to be able to thank Marty for all of her commitment and dedication to the students at WRVSU but also for the board to know that Marty has been mm -hmm. a huge advocate of the first branch unified district merger and the reorganization that's occurring this fall, which we're really excited about. So just thank you for everything, Marty. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Marty. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, and there's no other professional staff hires other than we certainly Annette's been bringing in paraprofessionals um, to fill up the ranks um, and that you know I think we're we're in really good shape in regards to special services which is really what the SU employs. Sarah? We have a resignation in the business office. Jason Rogers, the associate business manager, has resigned. His last day with us will be September 2nd. So as you saw, we have posted for an accountant. Uh, so if you know any accountants, please send them my way, even if they're entry level. Thanks, Sarah. Uh, any other business? Future agenda items, we'll discuss that. We will have our meeting on the 22nd, is that the date we picked for the retreat? Yep. Yeah, and then. Uh -huh. 22nd for the retreat, 27th for our next board meeting. And beyond that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. And you did it right in one hour. I shall move. <laughs> Do I, have I will second that. All right. So move. We're adjourned. Thank you.